Winning. Characters. Gaming. Excellence. Natural dice. Gifted. This is Professor Power Gamer. Hello. If you're watching this video, it's because you're a gamer and you suck at gaming. I'm deeply sorry that you are hot garbage, but I'm here to help you get good. First, let's discuss why you suck. You are terrible at gaming because you don't understand this remarkably simple universal truth to gaming. If you can't win, it isn't a game. Trademark quote me. That's right. Role-playing snobs, you are indeed in the game to represent a role. A role like tank, healer, DPS, or buff. Maybe you've confused gaming for acting. Maybe you think role-playing games are about telling stories. Well, my naive students, you're 100% wrong. This, this fatal flaw, is why you suck at gaming and you never accomplish anything. All your characters are trash, your game masters hate you, and actual gamers walk all over you. Tabletop gaming is just craps with dragons. Instead of betting money, you bet your hit points, and the house, aka the DM, always has odds in their favor. But I'm here to help. Yes, while some of us are born with inherent power gaming ability, there are many, like you, that are clueless story devotees who couldn't hit an enemy even if you rolled a nat 20. Today we'll talk about the simple act of min-maxing, and how you can use it to win your next game. Please open your books, whichever they are, and turn to the character creation section of the game. I'll personally be using Vampire the Puke Vomit book, because that's likely the book I'll use storytelling sad sacks use. Boo-hoo, personal horror. The only horror I experience playing this game is smelling your terrible clove cigarettes. Okay, character creation section. Story, 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 character background, blah, blah, blah. Ugh. What do you want to play, students? Do you want to play a tortured artist who finds the beauty of humanity so compelling that she spends her nights sniffing farts? How about a businessman who tells people to do things for him so he can have more stocks? How about ugly sad boys who hide in the sewer and hide their tears with their ugly sad boy faces? Nope. There are only three acceptable clans to play in this trash fire of a book. And that's the Bruja, Gangrel, and most importantly, the Caitiff. Uh, Bruja and Caitiff are basically the same thing, only Bruja get angry easier, which isn't a real game negative. Wait. You mean if someone makes me mad, I, I turn into a violent maniac who ignores pain and wound penalties? Where do I sign up? These choices are really quite moot. Personally, I go with Gangrel 10 times out of 10 for the pure and simple fact that Gangrel do ag damage. In the words of the great Jim Cornette, Thank you, fuck you, bye, boom! If you have to play as shit a game as Vampire, it's imperative that you do ag damage. If you play a Gangrel, your equally trash storyteller can't give you shit for taking murder hands. They're included in the price of admission. So just mark two levels of protein on your sheet and get your claws and put one dot in fortitude or something so you can tell other Gangrel or assholes with fire to piss off. Luckily, you can completely ignore animalism since it's worthless trash. Also, if you're playing Sabat, go for City Gangrel. Protean, Celerity, and Obfuscate? You know what? Screw that. Just play an Asamite. Asamite. ass a -mite. Say it with me. I forgot. This V20 book has all the clans in it, doesn't it? But your storyteller doesn't want you to have fun and actually win. He wants you to sit in smoky clubs and cry because your Grammy died. <laughs> so Gangrel it is, Cam Fam. All right. Next, go up to the top of your sheet, whatever game you're playing, and boost the living crap out of your most physical of abilities. If you're following along in the book, you want to drop as many dots as you can into dexterity. Don't argue with me. Don't tell me how your character is super strong and he hits super hard. Put dots in dexterity. When you roll to attack, you use dexterity. 
When you roll initiative, you use dexterity. Now, what's more important than hitting someone? Hitting them first. This also requires wits. So put four dots in wits, right now. And who gives a steaming crap where you put the other dot? Intelligence is pointless since you won't be acting as if you have one point in intelligence. Again, acting, this isn't theater class. The other stats like strength and stamina, whatever. Do you want to do more damage or get damaged? You have a dot of fortitude, put them all in strength. If you kill it before it hits you back, you win. Social? Who cares? If your storyteller ever asks you to make a social role, just tell them you want to roleplay it out. They'll be so weepy from anticipation and incense smoke that they won't even notice your character has a charisma of one because you put every dot in appearance. Okay. For those still watching this video looking to win, let's move down to abilities. You'll notice here on the character sheet, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. If you're such a noob that you need to know what the sheet looks like, you need to go back to power gaming grade school. Brawl, athletics, melee, firearms. Talents and skills are important for any properly made character. Knowledges are best spent by putting all of your points into investigation and occult. These two abilities are the most important for plot, trust me. Unless you're making the computer hacker or wizard class, most of the other knowledges are useless. A cult can be used by anyone, just to move the plot forward. Make sure you take a brawl of three and an athletics of three. Alertness, awareness, intimidation, subterfuge, and streetwise are great to stack as well, but aren't nearly as important as combat abilities. Melee and firearm should have as many dots as possible, with the drive being the next worthwhile ability and skills. Survival is also good for healing and combat, plus you're a gangrel, so this only makes sense. If you have any abilities left, because you can't start with more than three, put them literally anywhere. This is the point where you add random abilities and make up reasons why you have them, so your character seems more three-dimensional, you know, like a Rubik's Cube. Backgrounds. Who cares? Backgrounds are trash. Take a resources of five or an influence of five if you want to win money in politics, or just do the smart thing and take generation of five so you can have a higher blood pool and blow more blood around. Trust me, three blood a turn is a game changer. Eighth gen is the only way to go. Virtues? Also stupid. Courage of five, self-control of four, conscience of one. This is not up for debate. Courage of five gets you the highest willpower, five. Low humanity equals less ST meddling. Conscience? Who wants that? Your job is to win, not be sad about killing and maiming your way to victory. Now we'll turn to page 479. It's time to get yourself seven additional free points. You might be tempted to pick a cool merit. Unless your storyteller makes you, don't give in to temptation. This is about the best flaws for maximum point payout and the least ramification. First, take Infertile Vitae. Five point flaw that says you can't embrace? Great. Why would you? You're not Sabat, so why even bother? Next, Amnesia. No background for your character? No problem. A two point flaw that gets you out of making up a backstory sounds like a win to me. And like that, we now have 22 points to spend on our character. First, buy two more dots in Brawl. Five dots in Brawl will also give you a specialty. Take it in something like strikes or natural weapons. That way, every time you use your claws, you get access to the specialty. Don't forget, with your decks of five, you pick a specialty too. Pick one vague enough that you'll always get access to it in combat. Now we all know that most of our remaining points will be spent in disciplines, but what do we buy? Do we buy potence, celerity, or fortitude? Hmm, well there's merits for all three, but I wanna kill before I'm ever even hit. With potence, I get extra dice for damage, true, but if I overwhelm my opponent with my initial attack, I can get more dice too. But more importantly, with celerity, I can take more actions. Now, I already know that I'm rolling 10 dice to hit anything. Chances are that with two actions, I can kill anyone. You can buy fortitude with XP, 
you can get Earth Meld with XP, but two dots in Celerity. Buy two dots in Celerity now for 14 points. Trust me. Now put four points in Athletics. You can use one action to dodge and one action to kill. And that, my students, is a solidly made character. Surely you'll get plenty of pushback from your storyteller if you don't make a reasonable excuse for your build. I wouldn't worry too much. What will they do? Kick you out of their game? Not likely. Just push heavy on the fact that you use the rules as they're written and there's nothing wrong with your character build. Familiarize yourself with the rules enough and you can win over any storyteller you come across. Join me next month when we look at Vampire LARP character creation. Spoiler, it's quite different than what we made this episode. This episode was brought to you by Power Gamium. Power Gamium is the hardest of all elements, save for one massive glaring weakness we all ignore. And Utility Muffin Labs, consistently rated adequate. <laughs>